we're do all doing everything we can. We're covering our mouths. It's very difficult. I don't know what's going to happen, but I love you. And that's the last that we've heard of any of them. Right now, there are 69 people from Key Perret and Woods that are still missing, along with obviously the other 4,700 people as well. And I just really hope that everyone keeps praying for that miracle for all those people that are missing. It's just not fair, and we need to fight back. And you were sitting here right beside me as the president issued his uh, very harsh statement declaring this war, making he clear he's going to smoke out whoever is responsible for this. I know this is difficult, but you have spent the last four days talking to these other family members. There are friends, who, who some of whom you just mentioned. Do you believe, based on what they're telling you now, that just a fraction of the folks who worked with your husband's firm, including your husband, actually were evacuated? Is it your sense that they were all trapped on that floor, with the exception of some of those folks who were made it, able to make it to the 87th floor, where they found the door shut? Those that did escape left before the second plane hit. Even when the PA system came on, there were a handful of those that ignored it and just said, we're out of here, and just left. Um, and you were screaming to Rick the I am, whole time as you're yes, listening to the PA service yes, announcement. Yes, yes. Honey, just leave, get home. And he's like, sure, it's going to be fine. Of course, no one thought it was terrorism. The traders were standing, looking out the window with their hands on their hips, watching the other building burn. But of course, they never thought that their building would actually be attacked. Did your husband work for this firm during the 93 World Trade yes. Center bombing? And, and where he, was he that day? Same floor. And he called, when he called me to tell me about when the, the plane hitting the first building, the first thing he said is, I'm sick to my stomach. And I said, why? Because I didn't know it had happened. He told me. He goes, I hate this building. I hate this building. And, but he's did like, he have a fear of returning to work after the first World Trade Center bombing? Yes, he did. He definitely did. But, you know, you still never think it's going to happen again. And I don't think he really did even at that moment, even when he called me after the second plane hit. He goes, we're waiting to be evacuated. And he was very calm, very calm. Have you shared any of this information with officials investigating what happened? Because everybody's trying to piece together, you know, there are some 4,700 folks missing. Rick may be one of them. Has anybody asked you for this information? Because it's critical. It tells, it tells them where these employees were at the time and how far they got. Um, which is why I'm here today. Because no, except people of this company um, and just random people that I see on the street. I mean, I've gone to the armory given them all his information, his dental records, pictures, his sister's going today um, for DNA. I mean, doing everything we can, but I really just have faith in God that a miracle will happen and not all of these 4,700 people are dead. I do believe that there are people still in that rubble that are alive and are just waiting to be rescued, and I do believe that one of them is going to be Rick. I hope so. I really hope so, for your sake. It will be. I know you're talking about going down to the Armory Center, which is, you know, Elizabeth Cohen has been reporting from there all day long, and it's heartbreaking to hear the stories of people like you bringing pictures, bringing hairbrushes, bringing anything that could create a DNA match. Have you found the folks down there that have to process this information supportive? I mean, Lord knows they have a tremendous amount of pressure on them right now. Phenomenal. Nothing but phenomenal. Um, there have been so many volunteers there, not even just for drinks, for food, but counseling. Um, I walked in there and obviously broke down. I had two chaplains and actually a counselor and a detective and an FBI sitting with me for 20 minutes, just listening to me, trying to calm me down and relax me. Nothing beyond phenomenal. I think Giuliani has just done an incredible, incredible job. I was back down there again yesterday, and it's the same thing. Very orderly, no chaos, wonderful. Um, the number of people that have just come out from all over the country to help. People sending food from North Carolina, homemade food. Um, it's just incredible, incredible. Does your daughter have, I know you mentioned she's 16 months old, does she have any idea what's going on? She wakes up every morning. She doesn't quite talk. She goes like this, looking for her daddy. And I just keep saying, Daddy's at work, because he is still at work. 
So I went, you know, I am wearing the cross of Jesus and have Mary and I gave it to her and she kisses it and I say, this is for daddy and she kisses it. And I just keep saying, daddy's coming home because he will come home. I do believe that. Well, our heart yeah. goes out to you. I mean, I think it is so hard for any of us to understand what, what you're all dealing with. And I think perhaps that I know it was very important for you to be here this morning. You're empowering other people who are in the same uh, horrific uh, state of limbo. Do you There's, have any advice for, for those folks and for the rest of Americans, uh, America that's yes. listening to this interview this morning and obviously feeling your pain? Just have faith in God. The miracles do happen. Just keep praying. Be strong. And don't give up. Don't give up on your loved ones. They will return. They will return. That's it. Linda Perry, thanks. Thank you. Thank I don't you. even know what to say to you after that, but uh, you're showing enormous strength. And, uh, Thank you. Wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to make uh, quite a uh, uncomfortable uh, turn here, and as we make this turn, uh, I want to remind you, uh, and, and Linda just mentioned uh, this to you, it is very important for folks in all the hospitals around the city who are trying to match up the injured with their family members that are looking for them right now to get pictures out and to go down to the armory. Uh, CNN, uh, as you see missing at CNN.com. Uh, is actually processing through some of this information. Uh, so if you can download some pictures of, of folks uh, or friends that are missing in your life, uh, we're even told that uh, city officials are locking on, on to that uh, to help you in your search. All right, let's go back to uh, Washington, D.C. right now, where John King is standing by with some new information from the White House. John? Thank you, Paula. What we want to do at this moment, given the significance of what we've heard this morning from the President and from Secretary of State Colin Powell about the preparations for possible military response and significantly that the government of Pakistan has promised to fully cooperate with the United States, we want to go live now to the, to the Pakistani capital of Islamabad, CNN's Tom Mintir standing by there. Tom, a very significant development here. The United States has asked the government of Pakistan a number of things. One of them is to shut down the border with Afghanistan. Any evidence or any sense that that is indeed taking place? Well, we did hear from the foreign minister earlier in the day that in the last few days, they have already tightened the border. Uh, no indication that it's going to be sealed or closed. As you know, in international diplomacy, few things are in black and white or clear focus. Uh, it's still very fuzzy. The Pakistani government, uh, while they had a, a cabinet meeting and the Security Council, did reach consensus on a policy of full support to the world community, as they call it, to combat international terrorism. Consistent with Pakistan's policy, the report reads, of support for the decisions of the UN Security Council, which is 1368, which was passed on the uh, 12th of September, uh, they will uh, discharge the responsibilities, it says, under international law. Now, the foreign minister, in a briefing that just concluded here in Islamabad, uh, was not really putting it into sharper focus than that. Everything we've heard from the president on down is that they will support the UN resolution, they will support the fight against international terrorism and help the United States. But just how that help is going to be done, whether the airspace would be allowed to be used, whether ground troops could be stationed in Pakistan, whether the intelligence uh, information that Pakistan has would be shared with the United States, a lot of that is still fuzzy even at this hour. After the, the uh, consensus was supposedly reached at the cabinet meeting and the Security Council, uh, when the foreign minister came out to do his briefing, he talked about the UN Security Council resolution and the effort to combat international terrorism, there was not a full brief on what that cooperation will be. Uh, he also announced that the president will meet with political personalities and opinion leaders uh, in, in, in the coming days. Uh, no real announcement here on uh, what that cooperation may be. Now, the President of the United States and, and, and the uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell may know better in a phone conversation with the Pakistani President maybe today of what that level of cooperation will be. But so far, the Foreign Minister and others in the government are not sharing what that level of cooperation is outside of saying they will continue the effort to combat international terrorism and bring the perpetrators of what happened in the United States to justice. So uh, we were hoping for more details on, on what the uh, level of cooperation was going to be between the United States and Pakistan, but apparently that's yet to be announced. John? Well, as we wait for those details, Tom, 
assess the risks, if you will, to the government. Earlier today, we heard a Taliban spokesman, we played his remarks here on CNN, saying that they would consider any help provided by a neighbor, Pakistan obviously a neighbor of Afghanistan, they would consider any help provided by a neighbor to the United States as an act of war against the Taliban. Risks here for the government of Pakistan? Absolutely, uh, and the risks are immense. Uh, the foreign minister made a point of saying we will continue to talk with the Taliban, uh, possibly trying to reach some sort of non-military solution before the military uh, solution is put into place, uh, not ruling out uh, the continuing dialogue with the Taliban uh, with possibly Pakistan as acting as, as a middleman. But uh, the risks are immense. Uh, domestically, uh, you know, the, the choice of, of going with the United States against the Taliban, uh, the Taliban has been a, a close ally and neighbor to the Pakistan for some time. So it, it goes against existing policy. Uh, but uh, as many in the government said today, uh, what happened in the United States goes against uh, the right things being done in the world. And, and no one here uh, says they could feel right in supporting it. Focusing on the efforts of the Pakistani government, any sense, though, Tom, of what the reaction of the Pakistani people would be if their government allowed U.S. warplanes to use Pakistani airspace and perhaps even allowed the United States to use Pakistan as a staging area in any military campaign? Well, it differs but based on who you talk to. Some people say the streets are going to go alight here in Islamabad and that uh, every American target in sight will, will, will be hit. And the last time in 98 when they hit Afghanistan, there were riots in the streets. There were burning American flags and, and, and there was a lot of action that took place here in Islamabad. Uh, if uh, Pakistani airspace were to be used and if there was cooperation allowing ground troops on the ground here in Pakistan, uh, it, it could cause some real domestic problems uh, for the Pakistani government. Okay, Tom Mintir in Islamabad, thank you very much. We want to continue this conversation now with our Nick Robertson, who is across the border in the Afghan capital of Kabul. Nick, very strong words from President Bush today to Mr. Bin Laden, saying if he thinks he can hide, he will be sorely mistaken. Any reaction? So far, not from the Taliban. Uh, really, the main statement coming from the Taliban today was early this morning designed to influence that uh, decision-making process going on across the border in Pakistan. Very strong words there, essentially saying, if, without naming Pakistan, of course, if they get involved in supporting America, then we could, here in uh, Afghanistan, the Taliban saying, organize an invasion force of Mujahideen fighters to go across the border and invade. And when one thinks of, a, uh, as one would, of an international border, perhaps in the West, as being a very clearly defined border, here the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan, although on the map is very clearly defined, on the ground it's very different. The tribal communities that exist uh, around those border areas, the tribes spread across the borders, and, and we had an indication of that today. There was a meeting of tribal elders from a region close to Pakistan. Several hundred of these tribal elders in what they call an ulama here, a council of the elders. And in that council, they said uh, that an attack by America on Afghanistan would be unjust. They also said they urged America to consider carefully who the enemy was in this situation. Interestingly, and very interestingly, uh, significantly, in fact, they also called on the Taliban to keep open the doors of diplomacy. But they said if Afghanistan was attacked, then all the tribes would throw their support behind the Taliban. And some of those tribes spread across the border into Pakistan. So that could mean trouble for General Musharraf, the leader of uh, Pakistan. John? Well, Nick, in President Bush's remarks, somewhat implicit, the president said, if he thinks he can hide, we will smoke him out. He will be sorely mistaken. Implicit in that at least appears to be a discussion of using U.S. ground troops if necessary. Any sense on the ground there that there are preparations being made? Does the government, does the Taliban believe that a U.S. invasion or at least some U.S. forces coming into Afghanistan is imminent? On the ground here, certainly the uh, Taliban have been organizing themselves in preparation for an attack. The Supreme Leader Mullah Omar addressing the people by radio last night, uh, warning them uh, of the possibility of an, an attack and warning them of the possibility that they may need to lay down their lives like their fathers and grandfathers in the battle for Islam. So certainly the population being ready, readied for the potential of conflict. Uh, in terms of uh, ground troops coming here, a very difficult op uh, environment to operate in clandestinely. So one would imagine uh, any force that came here would have to be in a force of numbers. Uh, to find Osama bin Laden is probably going to be the biggest problem of any force 
coming here because he has essentially